Uh, Gani, when the movie closes, there are a few words in Hebrew that weren't translated into English. It says that the movie was made in memory of your mother. Can you tell me a little bit about her, about how you met Hadil? What's Hadil doing today? Yeah. First of all, I would like to say that I'm very excited to be here. And uh, thank you so much for coming and watching my film um, and having me here in this uh, important festival. And I apologize for the title that was not translated. It said that the movie is dedicated to my late mother, who was an Arabic teacher and an inspector of the Arabic language. So this is my connection to the film. Uh, I uh, did the MFA in uh, the Tel Aviv University in film and television. And I wanted to, I wanted to make uh, the film actually about my mother because she, as I said, was an inspector of the Arabic language in the, north of, in the south of Israel, in the Negev, from Ashdod to Elat. And that included all the Jewish schools and also the Bedouin diaspora. And she had many stories, and I wanted to make a movie about this uh, short Ashkenazi blonde woman <laughs> who the Arabic language, uh, teaching the Arabic language, and seeing that all the Jew Jews' kids speak Arabic was her life work. But unfortunately, she died almost uh, th six years ago, and I couldn't make the film about her. And so two years after, after she died, I decided that I must continue her way in my uh, media, in a filmic way. And so I went to her uh, colleagues in the Ministry of Education, to the chief inspector of the Arabic language, and I told him that I want to make a movie about an Arabic teacher. It's not that I knew a deal before that. And he introduced me to um, a mentor, one of the staff members in Mahon Mechavim. And she introduced me to Adil. She said, I have some, somebody perfect for you. Call her up and see if she's interested. So I called Adil up and she said, well, come to my home and we'll talk about it. So I went to her house in uh, Kfar Kara in Vadi Ara, which is uh, about uh, 25 minutes uh, north of uh, Tel Aviv or Fodo Sharon where she teaches. And I went there during the Ramadan month. She fasted. And um, I told her what I told you. And I told her that I'm looking for a change that an Arabic teacher is making through the teaching of the Arabic language. Um, that the change will be that through the language, the students will get to know the Arab culture better and to see the person behind the Arab, to see the human being. And she said, well, that suits me perfectly. Because when she studied to be a teacher, she studied to be both an Arabic teacher and a an Hebrew teacher. Um, during her internship in um, elementary Jewish school schools, she was amazed to find out that Jewish kids don't know that they are Israeli Arabs. Okay, 20% of the citizens in Israel, they didn't know they are Jew uh, Israeli Arabs. And that they hold um, Israeli ID card exactly like them and that Arabs work as lawyers, as doctors, as nurses, as ambassadors, and hold liberal professions as well. And uh, the kids asked her if Arab kids go to school and she, if she had TV at home. <laughs> and so at that moment, she decided that she's gonna teach Arabic in a Jewish school in order to make a change, even the slightest change in one or two kids but as you can see in the film, she's doing a much bigger change in my perception, in my point of view. Let's take some questions. Well, first of all, I want to agree with Yitzi that I think this film is an absolute gem. I've seen every film in the festival so far, and. I think this film comes more to grips with the real essence of the issue that this festival was created to deal with, and I congratulate you. It was a, you. not only highly enlightening, but very, very, very moving as well, I think. Um, one thing struck me as a little curious. Uh, Hadil seemed to be, if, if you hadn't heard her say that she had been teaching there for five years, you'd almost get the impression this is the first time she'd confronted these issues. Yes, it is. Uh, it was. We had a lucky year. <laughs> well, how did she deal the with film. these during the first four years that she was at the school? The issues of Yom Matzmaut and Yom Zikaron and okay, so, and all of that sort of thing. Okay, so 
I have a long answer for that. <laughs> I'll try to shorten it. Okay. okay. Um, I relate the, the conflict and the dilemmas of the Holocaust uh, Day and the Remembrance Day to the presence of the camera. But the girl that uh, called her stinking Arab, that was by coincidence. I wasn't even there when she yelled at her that, and that child was not in one of the classes that I shot. So that was by coincidence, and it was the first time in five years that somebody called her like that in school. And it was more than five years that she taught. Before those five years, she taught in other Jewish schools, and nobody called her like that. So that was a coincidence. And also the resistance of the parents to the building uh, the masks models, that also didn't have to do anything with the camera, because it was only five parents, actually, that resisted the, this uh, creative work out of 140 parents at that same level, class level, and they were parents not from the class I shot in. So that didn't have to do, that was a coincidence. She, she taught that every year, and that was the first year that people resisted and made a big fuss about it. They went to the rabbis over the, of Oda Sharon, and they did, they really gave problem to the principal about it. And then, but then on the Holocaust them, uh, day, and that after the ceremony, it was the first time that the principal asked her, how do you feel? Okay, she did go to the ceremony every year during those five years, but she was never asked how she felt. And it was the first time that she really told her how she feels, how she really feels. And uh, also the Remembrance Day. So I relate that to the presence of the camera because both of them knew that what they're going to say will have audience it's at the end. Of, so, but I think it's a good, it's a positive um, influence because I think it's a deeper truth than just a polite talk between a principal and a teacher that is being held without a camera. Thank you. <laughs> um, to me, what I saw in the movie seemed completely normal, completely actually open atmosphere. And actually, I want to say that I worked uh, some years ago, I worked as a teacher in a Muslim school here in New York, in Queens. And uh, when I went, the, I, I, I taught English. Um, I was from a city program, and it was a Muslim religious school. So I, taught, I went there, of course, dressed as I'm usually dressed. But I felt very uncomfortable being the only woman, all other female teachers, most teachers were female, and they were all wearing hijabs. I felt extremely uncomfortable because there were several men there um, working in the school yeah, uh, who looked at me as if I was naked just because I was dressed this way. Uh, so after several days going there in dressed the way I'm usually dressed, I felt just so extremely uncomfortable that I, I started wearing a kerchief. Um, it wasn't quite a hijab, but it was something that covered my head. And uh, I just want to say that what I saw in, I mean, I could go on and on about my experiences in the Muslim school. I also teach, now I teach in a Catholic school, and I'm Jewish, but I'm not religious in any way. I'm from the Soviet Union, so for me, Jewish was a nationality, right? So when in a Catholic school, um, when I tell them, sometimes it comes up, I usually try not to talk about it because I don't want to get into this very uncomfortable subject. Um, so when I told them that I was Jewish, they said something about, oh, did I kill Jesus, you know? So, um, or something, or do, are Jews going to kill Jesus again, or the second time, or something like that. Uh, so, um, so... What I want to say is um, what I saw in the movie was absolutely like a very good atmosphere and open and you can't actually ask for anything more. And children usually do grow up in whatever country, in this country, which is very multicultural, New York, right? Very, the most multicultural city in the world probably, right? So children do grow up in their own family where they, so it's normal that children don't know that there are, twin, you know, because they're children. They grow up in their own little world. Thank you. Thank you, you know? so much. Let's take a question maybe for um, Ami or for Ali. Uh, 